WTSPN presents Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Good morning. Welcome to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch, and I'm so delighted to be with you this morning. And I don't know where you are, but when I was coming in this morning, there was just a little gentle rain, and it was so nice. And uh, praise God, we sure need it. And I, I love fall, the fall colors, and um, just the beauty. I think fall is definitely my favorite time of the year. Um, it's just so, I just feel like I see the presence of God everywhere when I look around at the leaves, and the um, just the colors are so intense and um, just beautiful. And um, this, morning I, uh, this morning, I want to talk a little bit a little bit to you about peace, and um, I, I guess that's the word I could use when, I, when I'm describing fall. It's just, it's really peaceful. And I've been reading in the book of Luke, and as you know, and I'm actually wrapping it up and getting ready to read in the book of Acts, but one of the um, scriptures that really touched me is uh, from Luke 24, it's Luke 24:36, and says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. And I want to share with you the context, because the context of this is that um, if, you, if you know your scripture, and I hope you do, I hope you're in your word every day, because it's just transforming to, to be in God's word. But um, in this context, uh, the disciples, Jesus has just been persecuted. He's just been um, crucified on the cross, and um, he is, um, you know, the, he's, the, the tomb, they have discovered that the tomb is empty. The, the, the women there discovered that the tomb is empty. And they run back to the disciples and told them that Jesus' body is missing and they don't understand and they're terrified. If you know your Bible, you know how absolutely intensely indescribable that was to be a disciple, to be anyone who loved Jesus and to see him crucified on the cross, that torturous, horrifying death, and the, the, their Savior, uh, their Messiah, to be killed. And they don't understand that he had to go through that to rise again um, and that that's part of the plan. They don't get that yet. They don't fully understand that. And so here they are. They're basically in hiding, I would say, hiding from the, the Jews that they feel are probably going to be killing them next, um, the, the Pharisees and the Romans. And so they're terrified. They're worried. They are um, they're filled with doubt. They're confused. They are um, just in a bad way. And and Jesus appears to them. They're actually hiding in this upper room. And Jesus um, actually appears to them and says, peace be with you. And that sounds really absurd to me. Can, I mean, it's like, Jesus, are you crazy? <laughs> I mean, to be at peace in these circumstances? How can we do that? And have you ever been terrified? Have you ever been um, anxious? Have you, have you ever been uh, confused, uh, filled with doubt? I bet we can all relate to that. I know I can. Those circumstances were pretty bad. I know you've been in circumstances in your life that are bad, and I've been in circumstances in my life that are hard and bad, and it's, it's hard to imagine being at peace in that. But Jesus is peace. Jesus is peace. He offers the peace that passes understanding, as Philippians 4, 6 says. Um, how do we get that, though? Because I know if you're like me, sometimes you're like, okay, God, I want to be at peace, but I'm not, I'm not sure how to do this. I think we just have to open our hearts to him. I think we just have to cry out to him. I think we just have to really put our minds on him instead of on our circumstances. Um, peace is resting in the fact that he is sovereign. Peace is resting in the fact that he has a plan. Peace is not manipulating the outcome, because I know I do that. Sometimes I try to manipulate the outcome the way I think it should be, and I have no peace. So peace is just resting in him, resting that he has a plan, resting in his presence, looking at him, thinking of him, talking to him, going to scripture in our circumstances instead of keeping our eyes on what's going on around us. It's basically like scripture says, fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And I love that verse too because it shows you that our faith, where we are, is being perfected. And we're not always going to get it right with our faith. Sometimes we're in big faith, sometimes we're in small faith. And, um, but he's perfecting that. We just got to keep tuning into him and keep fixing our eyes on him and keep talking to him and um, just rest in his embrace. And uh, that's how we find that peace, the peace that passes understanding, even in the chaos. So I don't know if that blessed you, but it really blessed me. I've been journaling a lot about that. I really want the Lord to help me find peace more, help me to um, connect to his peace more. And um, I, hope, I hope that you will do the same thing. And uh, I have a great show today planned. I, I, I love it. I actually, sometimes I have some late minute, last minute changes here. But the show must go on. And I'll tell you about that as soon as I introduce my guest, Kathy Falour. Hi, Kathy. Hey, how you doing? Heather? Good to have you. Thanks. You're my friend, so it's good to have you on here. Makes it easier. <laughs> yeah. You were on a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I think, and uh, talking about your writing because you're an author. Mm -hmm. And since then, you also have a show here yourself called uh, Authors, Writers, Books, and Beyond, right? Yes, I sure. 
sure do. Is that on once a week or once a month? Mm, I picked once a month. Okay. Yeah, once a month on uh, Wednesday nights, right? The last Wednesday night of the month. Good. Awesome. So you guys definitely check out Kathy's show. She's a believer and she's an author and a speaker and you, God's just used you in a lot of ways. Um, but before I get to that, I want to share, you know, kind of what happened. So I was going to have um, Karen from the Faith Lutheran Church was going to be my guest. And last night she contacted me and said that she had to work. And uh, so I was like scrambling going, oh, who could be a last minute guest? Not a lot of people could do this like the night before, <laughs> you know, and you came to my mind. So I like to think that that's a God thing. Um, so thank you for that. You're welcome. I just happened to be here. My husband had the day off, and he, he went into work. Yeah. The it, opposite. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, and, and so the, the interesting thing is that Karen was going to be on the Faith Lutheran Church uh, this Saturday. They have a great event happening um, about spiritual gifts, yeah, yeah. and it's a retreat, and it's free. So if you uh, want to learn more about your spiritual gifts, you go tomorrow to the Faith Lutheran Church in Pioneer. I think it's from 9 to 4. It's free. It says bring a lunch that you can share with others. They serve a continental breakfast, and they're going to help you explore and understand what your spiritual gifts are. And so I was really excited to have them on today to talk about that. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that, too. Sure. Yeah, so what do you, do you know what your spiritual gifts uh, are? I'm gifted in exhortation and mercy. Oh, gosh, those are wonderful. And how have you used those? I use exhortation a lot in my speaking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just in everyday life when you come across somebody God brings across your path that's unexpected. Yeah. You know, you just silently pray and let the Holy Spirit guide you. Exactly. And mercy is total reliance on Him. Mm -hmm. He can have the gift of mercy. My husband says I'm too merciful. So you have <laughs> a heart of compassion. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So um, will you tell the viewers what exhortation is for those that may not know? It's to speak the truth even when it's not popular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And usually it is not. Yeah, you, exactly. And to speak it in love. In love. And Always in love. And encouragement. Because when I think of an exhorter, I think of someone who's able to bring forth the truth of God, mm -hmm. but in a way that's encouraging and, um, and empowering. You know? As a believer, anything I do must always be in love first, yeah, yeah. or it means nothing. Yeah, oh, absolutely. What's the scripture that talks about that in Corinthians? Mm, there's a lot that yeah. talks about the gifting. Do you know what she was going to cover? I don't. Was she going to cover all the spiritual gifts today? I'm not sure. I know that they're teaching that the, whoever the presenter is is going to be using the Stevens Ministry curriculum, oh, okay. which is a great ministry. So, but I'm not sure what that all looked like. I, I, you know, I know there's different you know, types of, uh, of labeling our spiritual gifts. Some are biblical. Some mm -hmm. use biblical labels. Um, some use other types of labels. I know I did my spiritual spiritual gifts test um, recently, and I'm exhorter also, perceiver, and the third one was administration. Administration. I'm also which, gifted in that. Which I don't really like that one. <laughs> I don't either. But God uses it all the time. Totally. Totally. Yes, he does. And in fact, I'm like, how can I be good at this? Because I have no training in it, but it's just, it's a gift, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not saying that I'm so gifted. I'm A gift is something, and that's another thing. I think with our spiritual gifts, we can tend to be really, um, we're afraid to talk about them because we think that it sounds arrogant. But oh. Gifts have nothing to do with us. Gifts All about are him. exactly they're given from God to us that by his mercy <laughs> and his compassion mm -hmm. and his grace he gives those gifts to flow into others. You right? may think this is an odd verse. Um, it's a couple of verses for exhortation exhortation, but it's really in Ephesians um, the armor of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. I learned that with my children. I actually talked on your show last time, I think, because you asked me, because I always pray it before I drive. And I think a good soldier needs to always remember to, you can't just wear your armor, you have to put it into use. Absolutely. And when you have the gift of exhortation, you need to be using that armor. Absolutely. Because the arrows are going to fly. Exactly. And when we put on the, our, our armor, like you're saying, Kathy, it's like the darts just bounce mm -hmm. off us. <laughs> the arrows just bounce off us, yeah. you know. I know you're awesome because I've, I've gone on a couple of road trips with you, and you do pray before each one, and you have the, the, um, you have the whole armor of God scripture, which is Ephesians 10, right? Or is mm -hmm. it 6? 6, 6, 10 through 20. So you have it all memorized. Yeah, I'm with my children. It was a homeschool thing, mm -hmm. challenged by a local pastor here in Jackson. He challenged the parents, which we as homeschoolers, you do that anyway. You don't just assign it. Yeah. You, you learn it with them. Yeah. And so I have found in God's wisdom... Um, at that particular time, that was 16 years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I had not really been using it the way I was, and he was stepping things up in my life. Mm -hmm. And so in his wisdom, that's what he gave me. 
And don't you love how the Lord prepares us? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't even realize we're being prepared until we get to that point and we go, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord, for equipping me. Mm -hmm. He knows ahead. You know? And he so wisely doesn't tell us. Exactly. Yeah. I know, because with your writing and all that, we're going to talk about that more today, but you probably never imagined that you'd be where you are today with your writing no. many years ago. You know? I really didn't. Yeah, because I mean, I know there's some things that, that you can't quite cover right now, but you are... Um, you are working with publishers and, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I have a I never saw myself with a literary agent yes. and Wendy Lawton of Books and Such Christian Literary Agency is my um, and agent I, and for those who don't know that's a big name in the Christian world I well I know she was brought to me through prayer I think on both our parts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very much so and mm -hmm. um, it has been not the journey I thought it would be either you don't so much have expectations as I went into it not knowing yeah. And there's, you know, just like anything, mountains and valleys. And um, just, uh, I'm getting ready to go to Monterey on our, um, my, we call ourselves bookies on retreat. Yeah. And so it'll be a new experience uh, that I haven't yet had with them. A writer's retreat? It's a, for all the, um, their a clients, their agency clients. Oh, wonderful. We'll go to Monterey for a couple awesome. of days. And, yeah, That sounds wonderful. Very good. Yeah, and just kind of bond and, and pray together. Yeah, and praying, deepening relationships, mm -hmm. and we all have individual appointments with our agents, and that I'm really looking forward to. You know, it's such a close working relationship to work with an agent. They really have to know your heart, and you have to know their heart. And um, it's 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 God centered. It's very know? God centered, and this is a very changing publishing world. Mm -hmm. It has not been the same since 2008. So they are writing the daily changes as much as we are. Yeah. So it's a whole new frontier, uh -huh. isn't it? We can talk a little bit more about that. We're actually going to head to break. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Good. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith, and I'm just delighted to be interviewing my, my friend and my sister in Christ, Kathy Fallour, author, speaker, uh, talk show host, <laughs> all that. And uh, you've been a mentor to me, Kathy, and I think I told you this last time you were on, but um, you really, you know, you, we... You believed in me, and you, I know you still do, but uh, I used to be connected with you a little bit more through a writing group that, mm -hmm. you, that you've that you spearheaded and you lead. And I haven't been a part of that writing group in a long time, but I'm getting that, I'm getting back into that. And, but That's even, wonderful. Yeah, and, but back then, what, was that 2010 or 11, mm -hmm. I think, and you really spoke into my life, and it really encouraged me, and I really thank you for that. You know, you've believed in me. That's, that's nice to know God used me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he will continue to do that. And I hope he can use me in your life, too, because I pray for you. Oh, I know you, you know, do. I pray for I you I can a lot. tell. So, yeah. You know, it absolutely. was actually your husband, Vince, who came to me as a reader that brought you in. Yeah. You invited him. I can't remember how you guys met. He was a reader, and I don't either. Yeah. I don't he, think it matters, but he, he read my first novel. Yeah. And then he recommended you. Yeah, exactly. So my husband will have to thank him again. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I always like the viewers to get to know my guests on a personal level. So, um, you know, you've shared in the past, but it's been a while, and we have some new viewers and things. So tell us about your spiritual walk, how you became a believer. I grew up very, with a lot of religiosity in my life, mm -hmm. which was actually also a good thing because I heard the Gospels. Mm -hmm. Um Seven, six out of seven days a week. Wow. But you mean God, like your parents read them to you? or No, okay. no. I, I, I went to a service okay. um, five days a week before school. Oh, wow. And then church on Sunday. Okay. But I didn't know God. Mm -hmm. I knew of him. I believed in him. But, um, and I went through private schooling. Mm -hmm. So I had the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, but not the heart of surrender. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. And when I turned 30... I finally had a little girl, and um, after three sons, I had prayed for her when I was seven, actually. Hmm. I'm one of eight daughters and no sons. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about that. Yeah, eight daughters. I'm second. Yes. I'm two of eight. Wow. <laughs> anyway, when Jenny was born, she was answered prayer for me, and I, I, I could feel God drawing me near, and I was a little, not afraid, but I knew it meant change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I knew it meant change, and I was not in surrender to anything, so... Mm -hmm. She was a um, SIDS baby, okay. and when she was two and a half months old, she had two SIDS episodes, wow. sudden infant crib death. Wow. 
Yeah. So she ended up back in the hospital for about 10 days. Praise the Lord that she didn't pass away mm -hmm. because that's usually the result of that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, usually it is. Yeah. She, um, she survived, but that first day when they took her in, we didn't know she was already brain damaged mm -hmm. because she'd already not um, been outside normal limits. Wow. And I remember sitting in the hallway, they'd moved her from McClellan to Travis to this antiquated old Travis, David Grant Medical Center. And I sat in the hallway and I was looking at the surroundings, the circumstances, and thinking, how are they going to help her here with all this? Mm -hmm. And I was almost shaking my fist, not visibly, but in my heart. Yeah. And um, I was yelling at God, you know, why did you give her to me just to take her away? Yes, yes. And I heard this voice inside me say, whose daughter is she? And I just knew. I said, I answered him. She's yours. I knew she didn't belong to me. She wasn't my possession. Mm -hmm. And I was already making her one. Mm -hmm. And, and I kind of like reminds me of the story of Abraham and Isaac. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It was a definite moment of pure surrender. Mm -hmm. That was where I, the peace you were talking about earlier in the show just flooded within me. Because I just gave her to him. I surrendered her to him and I surrendered myself. Yeah. As a parent, you know, I mean, just you can imagine facing a potentially losing your child, and I know so many parents out there do face that. Most of, most of them don't live. Yeah. And Lord, in his mercy, put a friend I grew up with in high school, her and her little boy were across the hall. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. So we had each other. He gave yeah. us each other, yeah. my friend Aggie. And so at that point, that was when I surrendered my life to Christ. It was February. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was born in... Um, 1985, February um, 9th, 1986. Mm -hmm. She was so, two and a half months old. So did, did they, you know, I, forgive me for not knowing this, but do they have any more understanding of what SIDS is caused from? I remember then I would put her on her back and I thought that was it. And I had just taken CPR at my husband's squadron at McClellan Air Force Base. The only time in my life I've ever done that. Oh my gosh, talk about the equipping. The only time wow. in my life. And she, I brought her back once. And I thought I imagined it, and then she stopped breathing a second time. And that's when we called the ambulance, and I brought her back twice wow, before Kathy. they came. Wow. So he had prepared the way. Mm -hmm. And I, I should have gone back since then, but I haven't. And I really hope people, that's one of the things I really pray on this show, is as people tell their stories, that people will see the God moment. Oh. That God led you to get CPR. It wasn't an accident. And he, you know, every, he's in, he, everything that happens is... It was, by it was also the, the first time they had opened it to the spouses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The military, you know, were given it, but it had been opened to the spouses. Yes, so it was he just prepared the way he knew what was coming. Exactly. And exactly. you don't really know after that if there's brain damage for a while. Mm -hmm. They told us she'd be for certain six months behind in motor skills and things. She's a perfectly beautiful person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love her. So one of the things, very talented. <laughs> so one of the things I always like to ask my guests is when Jesus became real for them. So when did Jesus become real for you? Was this the moment? I No. I I had been like talking to him. I didn't know you could do that. It's mm -hmm. not how I was raised. Okay. Like I said, I prayed for a daughter at seven. Mm -hmm. I just talked out loud to God. Yeah. So there were moments. Um, there was one person that I really saw Christ in. And I asked him, I was, it was my senior year, you have something I don't. Mm -hmm. What is it? And he said, well, my, I surrender. he surrendered to God. Mm -hmm. And so there were a couple other times, but immediately from that point. I didn't know when I took my baby home what to expect. Mm -hmm. So there was immediate, complete reliance on him in a way I never had before. Mm -hmm. And I got into community Bible study in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life, I started reading and believing in the Bible. And it's so important this moment of surrender that you're talking about. If we don't have that big moment of surrender, um, daily surrender is going to be impossible. And we have mm -hmm. to daily surrender our will to the Lord. You know, I mean, there's not just one moment. There's the big surrender, mm -hmm. and then there's a bunch of little surrenders for the rest of your life, right? But if you don't have that big surrender, you're not going to have that relationship. And it was a very quiet moment. No one around me would have known yeah, it was just what was going on. Yeah. It was inside of me mm -hmm. with the Lord, very deeply personal. Mm -hmm. And I did not know then. He, he doesn't tell you everything. Mm -hmm. She had a long, hard life ahead of her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She had serious medical issues that, um, and I'll never know if they're a result of that, mm -hmm. that kept her in hospitals specifically for a whole decade, in and out, in and out. She had a revolving door in ICU. Wow. So I have a great respect for her, and I learned back then, I knew every day was a gift. Yes, amen, amen. And I have 
had to live that with her. And mm-hmm. you talk about reliance yes. and a grateful heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every day I thank him because I don't take it for granted. No. Absolutely. Not, not just with my daughter, with my sons also. Mm-hmm. With life in general. Mm-hmm. Can't take for granted. No, nothing. Absolutely. Well, you know, and going back to the opening and talking about peace, you know, when we look at our circumstances, circumstances can look so bleak. It's just, it can be depressing, you know. In some a situation that like you're talking about, you can look at that and give up and not have hope. You know, but we have to put our eyes on the Lord. And that's why I always tell people, be in your word. Know his scripture. Because when you know his scripture, you can replace those negative thoughts, those defeating thoughts, with truth. Mm-hmm. You know, this is so important to be in the word and know his truth. That's the word my church and our Bible study and our sermons. Hope is what we're studying this week. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yes. And I took a Bible study last night. I have a Noah Webster 1828 dictionary I use for writing. Mm-hmm. I used it for homeschooling. Mm-hmm. And uh, I read just a portion of the whole column of the definition of hope. And the second one is all about surrender to Christ. It is? In the you should read it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. It is I a phenomenal. We went from hope to faith. Mm-hmm. And um, because having hope is faith if you read hope. Yeah. And the faith definitions you wouldn't see in a dictionary today. Wow. And it is in the 1828. Oh, i got to read that. American that's awesome. um, Dictionary of the English Language, mm-hmm. Noah Webster. Mm-hmm. I believe he became a Christian writing that dictionary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Took a long time. And so faith produces hope. Mm-hmm. And then hope produces, produces perseverance. <laughs> which is one thing I've had to really... Yeah. That's something God really has worked in in me. Mm-hmm. Perseverance. Mm-hmm. That with the writing, you have to be perseverant. Oh, absolutely. And I was just talking to my daughter about this last night. She, um, you know, she's willful. You know, she's 13. <laughs> and she's willful. And so we were talking about her willfulness. And um, I was trying to talk with her versus lecturing her. And, um, you know, and she was opening up and just saying, Mom, I just can't help myself sometimes. She goes, I'm just, that's the way i made. You know, and she, and I go, but, you know, I said, we got to keep trying. we got to keep trying. God is trying to change us. He's changing our old ways to be new ways. And he, he doesn't want us to give up and say, well, that's just the way I am. Too bad. But I keep trying every day to submit to him. And he'll help us with that. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to persevere. He loves know? to help us with that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it is hard sometimes, especially mm-hmm. if that is your personality. But we got to persevere. Whatever it is we, de- we deal with, whatever cross to bear we have, we must persevere and not give up hope. And I definitely had a rebellious personality. Yeah, you've told me that mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Which I can't see that in you now. You seem you to talk to my mother, you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she has some good stories. She doesn't remember them anymore. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, she has Alzheimer's. But, um... If she had her memory, she could. So you were strong-willed? Oh, I was very strong-willed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was the tomboy until the two younger sisters came along, too. Yeah. And so I was pretty fearless. Yeah. I yeah. would try anything. So is, do you, I mean, so what's it like for you? You only have a minute before we go to break, but we'll talk more about, you know, what is it? What do you recommend? What could you recommend to someone who's strong-willed? You'd really have to spend time alone with God every yeah. morning Amen. surrendering. Amen. And then... The praying without ceasing, mm-hmm. once I truly understood and learned that, mm-hmm. that is the greatest help. Mm-hmm. Just constant conversation with him, and I spend more time listening than talking at him. Amen. Amen. Just sitting in his presence, mm-hmm. listening. Yeah. Amen. Resting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, resting. Resting. Um, yeah, when we talk, um, you know, about, about that peace that passes understanding, a lot of that comes from just sitting with him. Uh-huh. I'm seeing a prayer counselor right now, and it's really been a really incredible experience. And she's, she said when I first came in, she goes, you just strike me. She goes, you, you're busy, you know. And she goes, you have, you have a lot on your plate, and your mind's always working. And one of the things I want, why I want to work with you is how to just rest in God's presence. So I've really been working on that. It's a lovely place to be. It is, exactly. So I really encourage people to try the same thing. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith, and I'm here with Kathy, and we're talking about just your life and peace and, and all that and Jesus, and uh, it's, so, it's so awesome to be part of a show where we can talk so openly about Jesus. I just so feel so blessed. Thank you for being it part of It is a blessing. That. It is. It is. And I always pray that the show can be used to empower people, you know, equip people, and encourage people. So that's really, the, that's really what, we're, what we're after here, and really just want to help believers. As you know, I really want to help 
And I know this is your heart, too. Help believers have a deeper relationship with Jesus, to become more committed to him, to following him, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that unbelievers watch. Because if I, when I was an unbeliever, you know, I was very skeptical, you know? And I knew some, I, I, I had some good Christians in my family, but you don't always pay attention to your family, the cousins and aunts and stuff. They were great, but a lot of the other people I knew in my life that were Christians, you know, um, I just, in my mind at the time, I just, I just thought that they were hypocrites and judgmental and all those things. I really didn't, Open my eyes, you know, I really didn't, um, really made some snap judgments about people. And um, so I, I know what it's like to sit in that seat and, and think, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to, if that's the God they're talking about, I don't want to part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, now that I'm a believer, I'm like, no, you've got to know Jesus is amazing and he saves and his grace and his mercy and, his, you know, his. We're the living testimony. Yeah. They watch us, how we live out our faith. Exactly, exactly. Exactly, and we're not perfect, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so as believers, we, we've got to give each other grace and be, um, we're not perfect, but at the same time, we've really got to, we've really got to start um, giving our lives to the Lord and, and, you know, surrendering like you talked about, mm -hmm. you know, surrendering our lives to Him, not just on Sundays, you know. It's a moment-by-moment so. moment thing. I used to say day-by-day, day, now I say moment-by-moment. Moment. Exactly. We make choices moment-by-moment. Moment. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Exactly. I think people want to know that this is a real faith. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of real problems in the world, and people want to know that there's a real God who can help get them through that. I have to say, for, for with him in my life, it wasn't just my daughter. I have a soldier son who just re-enlisted after 20 years. Oh, my God. His mom was really hoping and praying he would not. Wow. He, he has done his service. He's been his special forces, so um, he has gone over to the Middle East. I quit t counting in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And I don't get to know where he is or what he does every time wow. Wow. also. And so there is nothing but complete surrender there. I mean, I, when I do know I'm on my knees praying and there's a prayer chain that prays for him. But that is a whole different type of journey than oh a sick gosh. child. It's, there's, you are totally helpless. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There are helpless. a world away in mm -hmm. um, a war zone mm -hmm. where, and sadly... You know, the new thing now is not so much to kill the soldiers, but they want to capture them. Yes, exactly. And so, he, God has kept him alive mm -hmm. through that whole thing. Mm -hmm. He's starting with the Iraq War and then the Afghanistan War and everything after that. Mm -hmm. But for his purpose and will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You really have to be able to let your kids go into God's hands, mm -hmm. like you said, with your daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, would, was he, did he go into the military? Because I know they're several years apart. So He's what the happened oldest first? and she's the youngest. So what happened first, him going into the military or her No, SIDS? he was 12 when she okay, was born. Okay, okay. He just turned 40. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you learned through her mm -hmm. what it was like to let God go. God really prepared me for yeah. what was coming. Yeah, exactly. And with, when my husband retired from the military, he served in the first Gulf War. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, honestly, we never dreamed when he went that we'd be sending a child later. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that's powerful. And how would you be able to get through that if you weren't a believer? You know, to, to I don't know how someone does. Yeah, exactly. Because it is a hard thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have a friend that's a gold star mom. Mm. Wow. Wow. And, you know, you have the joy of yours coming back, but they don't all. Exactly. exactly. So you need just always on your knees, always on your knees praying, mm -hmm. which is a gift. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. And I talked to you earlier about my life verse, and I've said it repeatedly on this show. I'm going to say it again, Romans 8, 28, for we know that in all things God works together for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And it's in this situation or these situations where you have to stand on that mm -hmm. because even if your child does pass away, and I hate to even say those words, um, you know that you'll be with them in heaven. Mm -hmm. You know that, you can, that God's going to use it for good. You know that God's still a good God, even if our prayers don't get answered the way we want them to be answered, you know. Oh, I have no guarantee when my son goes over next time, and there will be a next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I have complete confidence and faith yeah. that he's in God's hands. Mm -hmm. One of his, um, one time I did get to learn what he did when they declassify something. Mm -hmm. It was a bronze medal with valor he was awarded. And when I read, when I could read it, it they were the very verses. God had woken me up in the middle of the night to pray in the Old Testament because they were ambushed from before and behind. And God put my son on the high ground, and because of where he placed him and what he does, he was able to save the soldiers before that would have, they were, there was no escape. Wow. But what Christopher does called in help. Mm -hmm. And so I realized later, my gosh, you know, I got up and I obeyed, 
and I wrote it in my Bible. And whenever I'm struggling, I'll go back to those places. Yes. yes. And I'll remind myself, this is where, where he knew before and what, where he was for you over and over again. Mm -hmm. Some passages have ten dates mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of times that he did things. Wow. Over many years, because I'm 59. Yeah. So it's been almost 30 years mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it started, boom, right away. Mm -hmm. I... Um, he, take, he knows what we can handle. Mm -hmm. You know, the saying, people say, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. um, I think he stretches us. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say, because I don't know if I believe that, because where does he it stretches us? <laughs> exactly. And it's in the stretching that we increase mm -hmm. our faith, that he increases our faith. You know? I think if he just left us in a nice place, mm -hmm. we'd stay there, because it would be comfortable. We wouldn't want to go and deeper, because and, it is harder. Yeah, we, we doubt. We absolutely want to stay in our comfort You know, I, I feel like he started me on the, in the rear guard, like a military term. Mm -hmm. I was in the back. Mm -hmm. And then he moves you up to the front. You need to be equipped mm -hmm. to be on those front lines. Front lines, amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It isn't that the arrows don't fling to the back, too, mm -hmm. but... There is an equipping, and he never sends us out mm -hmm. without equipping us first, ever. Amen. He's too loving. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're in for an easy ride. Exactly. Following Jesus is not an easy walk. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I hope people hear that because I don't ever want people to think, because we talk a lot about hope and faith and, you know, and trusting God and all that. It does not mean it's going to be easy. No. One of my favorite yeah, in fact, books. It can be very hard. <laughs> one of my favorite books from way back in my beginning is called No Easy Road, mm -hmm. and it's by Dick Eastman, and it's all about prayer and how you change your prayer life. Mm -hmm. And thank God, it's just this little thin paperback mm -hmm. that he brought that to me right away. Mm -hmm. because I had kind of a misconception of, um, okay, I have God now. I'm okay. And I didn't realize, I didn't realize the depth of it, exactly. of what was coming. Exactly. Exactly. But there is that peace in the middle of it. Exactly. Exactly. Every time. And the more, and that takes getting to know Jesus. You can't just go, go to church on Sunday, listen to a good sermon, and then expect to have the peace that passes understanding. Uh -uh. You know, you've got to get deep with the Lord. You've got to, we've got to. Through prayer, like I know you're a prayer warrior. Prayer transforms us. Prayer changes prayer, me. Yes. It changes me continually. Yes. Our church just um, finished a study on Acts that, was a phenomenal study when I started going there. The, um, I think they called it the road trip, but it was studied through the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And I have two pastors that teach on Sunday, Tim and Tom, and then my Tuesday Bible study teacher is Sam. And on with that, we go over what we did on Sunday. Oh, that's great. It's really getting intense. It in. was. Yeah. I, I taught Acts when I was in CBS. I was a core leader mm -hmm. that led a group of women. We're more of a moderator. And so... It was a very in-depth study, and I'd studied it twice since then. But this one, we just came out. It was so powerful. It w God is definitely planning to do something. So what, what do you think, if I can put you on the spot, what's, what's one thing you really got out of it this time that's different? I, I, I'm in a different place now than I was then. Mm -hmm. He's brought me through a lot, and I know there's more ahead of me. Mm -hmm. There was a very clear understanding of... Um, to even deepen more the prayer life than I have now because an onslaught's coming, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And how important everything in Acts is based on prayer. In the beginning of the church, we are not like that church. Yeah, exactly. And that was the other heavy conviction. Yeah, exactly. Is we are not like that church mm -hmm. and we are meant to be. Well, we've, we've become so consumer-oriented. You know, we want people, I say we, we the church, we have, we want to appeal to people. We want to reach out to people. And I think, which, which is great, we need to reach out to people. And we need to offer grace and all those things. But I think that we have, it's been twisted along the way, you know, in our attempt to, to reach out to the world, we've become more like the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, instead of transforming the culture, we're becoming like the culture. Like it, you exactly. Know? And it's hard. I mean, it's, 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 and it's a slow decline that happens. Happens, but it's happening. You're right, mm -hmm. and we've got to get back to the early church. That was the deepest for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was even in my place, I kept thinking I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have, in any way, quit growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought not pridefully so, mm -hmm. but in surrender. And God made it clear to me. Number one, I knew that's where I was supposed to be. I really, really prayed before I went there, mm -hmm. and it was more important to me to be obedient than anything else. And then I had no idea what to uh, expect. You mean in this act study? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and and with I'm with a new church family, and I belong there. Okay, good. And so I don't know what's coming next. Yeah. I don't have to know either. Yeah, exactly. I just need to keep That's walking by them. faith. Mm -hmm. Walk by sight. I'm sorry, walk, walk by, by faith, faith, not by faith. sight. <laughs> Amen. And that's another that's another uh, that's another way to be in peace mm -hmm. is to keep our eyes on our faith, not on our sight. You know, walk by faith. So I think the total coming away from self, because a self indulgent nation is absorbed in self. Exactly. And it's insidiously slow at first. Yeah. I think you realize it's happening. Exactly. And so. Uh, Really, I kept going back to those first verses, those first chapters in Acts, that I was so, it was such a struggle for them. And Paul, I've always loved Saul Paul. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's just always been, for me, because I was rebellious, he was not, he was a zealot in what he truly believed. Yes, yes. And in persecuting the church, he thought he was doing the right thing. Right. And he did the whole turnaround. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I'm praying that's what we're going to see. Mm -hmm. More of that. Mm -hmm. More Paul's. Yeah, more softballs. Exactly. Even yeah. more softballs. Good. On that note, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I hope you're enjoying the show so far, and uh, come right back. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. And we're back. <laughs> and I want to direct you to TSPNTV.com. It's a great website. Um, I like to really promote that on the show because you can go and check out Kathy's show on there, right? right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's on the, if you go to all shows on the website, you can click down and see all the programs. You can click on her show, all the archived uh, editions. You can also look at my show there. And TSPNTV.com is just a really good, really a wealth of information. Plus, you can go to HeatherMurdoch.com, and there is my blog there, as well as I post the show and just some other encouragement. So, HeatherMurdoch.com, or you can go to YouTube. Your show's on YouTube mm -hmm. as well, yes, or you can is. go to YouTube for Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Authors, writers, books, and beyond. Uh, Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's check that all out. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, we were talking about, you know, we've been talking all along about how you're a writer, and so tell me how you use your writing to share the gospel. At first, I wrote nonfiction, like I was telling you. Yeah. I started with Sacramento Christian Writers in, in Sacramento. Lovely, um, just a small band of godly women that the Lord used to mentor me. Yeah. And I wrote about prayer. Mm -hmm. I, did, I had been doing some, I've always done a little newspaper writing, even up here for the ledger. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wasn't sure what direction to go with it. So I did some magazine articles. I wrote one for Center Voice, um, with, um, Grass of Hope, and it was for the Union Gospel Mission. Oh, cool. Down in Sacramento. That was a great one. I, I really enjoyed that. But I wrote a lot about prayer columns. I had a prayer column. I did a lot of columns during that decade in my life. And actually wrote a nonfiction book with my children about the two youngest being type 1 diabetics at 9 and 11, mm -hmm. diagnosed five months apart. Wow. And that was a lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, God kind of nudged me in another direction, which was fiction. Mm -hmm. And as I was telling you during break, that was a little scary. Yeah. I, who, what, where, when, why, and how is different than yeah. creating something from Yeah, nothing. it's daunting, it seems, yeah. And so, of course, I w had to learn. So I went to Mount Hermon a lot. Um, John Drury's little conference up here in uh, Castro Valley that is now, he retired and is a new conference this year, this February. And I just went to all the little ones that Sacramento Christian writers offered and honed my skills. And lo and behold, yes, I can write fiction. <laughs> yeah, beautifully. Oh, my gosh. Tell, can we tell the titles of your books? Um, the children's books. I'm what they now call a hybrid writer. Okay. Um, I come from the indie self background with the children's mm -hmm. through Lulu Press, who was very good for me with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, when the Birdies Came to Tea yeah. is about, you know, being a cheerful giver, mm -hmm. um, giving without receiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Snowman ate our picnic lunch, mm -hmm. uh, Nana's Tin of Buttons, and Barefoot yeah. Adventure. Yeah, I love the, I love yeah. the Nana's Tin and of Buttons. And they all have their, it's a family s stories. There's no electronics. It's all about families living a life um, simply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very simply. And Back to the basics, mm -hmm. biblically. Very yeah. glorifying to God. All my mm -hmm. books say, to God be the glory. Yeah. And, you're, and then you also write in the, the adult genre as well. Yeah, and I started with the novels, and Wendy represents my um, novels. 
The language of the lake is the one she is currently, sh what we call shopping. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a trilogy. I wrote, I've completed the first two. The second one is Lake Cottage Book Haven. These also are Tahoe stories, but in contemporary mm -hmm. times. Yeah, they're all set in Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so. I'm just into 20,000 words of the third Azure Shores. And how many, oh, I love that title. Okay. Pretty. Yeah. Beautiful. So what, um, how many words do, do your books t typically Oh, have. around 90,000. Okay. The okay. novels. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. So I've got a ways to go with the last one. Yeah. You know, it's funny. So I went to the Inspire Writers Conference that you recommended uh, recently. That was, what, a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And um, so I was in the bathroom talking to one of the ladies. You know how it is in the bathroom with the women. <laughs> exactly. And so she was so sweet. Anyway, and so she was very encouraging to me. And I was sharing with her I want to write a devotional, which I've been sharing that with you too. And uh, I want to write my life story too, but I want to start with a devotional. I just really feel led there. And so I was kind of talking to her about that genre, and I said, well, you know, do you think there's so many devotionals out now? Do you think it's saturated? I asked her, you know, do you think if I get into that genre, then I'll be like pigeonholed there, you know, all these different different questions I had. And she was saying, I was sharing with her how I write on my blog, and then I write Facebook every day. I use as my writing practice, too, for kind of mm -hmm. ministry writing. And she was saying that it was really good. She said, um, she goes, I'm so happy to hear that you're writing like that because you're learning how to write tight. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know write tight what that was, but I understand. It's a, it's a devotional. <laughs> yeah. And but to be able to write something in, in, in a compact way that packs a punch, you know. And so I, so it's writing economically, right? Mm -hmm. Does that mean yes. writing economically? So how is that something that all writers have to learn how to do is to oh, write yes. economically? The group I founded up here because I came from Sacramento and didn't want to keep commuting. Yeah. Um, the whole point was to teach them that type of writing yeah. where we critique and then you get your first creative draft out first and we go back and edit mm -hmm. um, after critiquing. So most of my chapters and my novels have been worked on five, six, seven, eight times. Yeah, yeah. I That's, mean, it's the editing. As you do it, you tone it down and it becomes tight, concise writing. Yeah, absolutely. Although I do have a devotional I read every morning. It's my friend Vicki Hurley. Mm -hmm. I met her at Mount Hermon a couple years ago. She was there with her husband. And it's called Releasing Truth. You would like her. Oh, I love that title. I should title. introduce you to. She lives yeah. back in Missouri, but... Um, well, yeah, we can communicate Definitely speaks the truth in love. So do you recommend writers groups for writers, for would-be writers? Well, Sacramento Christian Writers is gone now. Mm -hmm. They're part of Inspire Writers. Yeah. And so I recommend for that Sacramento area, Inspire mm -hmm. Writers. Up here, they can come to Amador Writers. Which you are the leader mm -hmm. of. But do you recommend, I mean, overall, do you think it's important that writers be a part oh, yes. of a group? I, some people, it doesn't work. It depends on your personality. Mm -hmm. I would recommend praying first. Yeah. Some people have just a critique partner, mm -hmm. one other person. Yeah. And that works best for them. Mm -hmm. And I also have readers. That's how I yeah, met that's you. I met, yeah, I was reading Language of the Lake. And yeah. I needed a, a male viewpoint. Mm -hmm, so I had mm -hmm. three male readers. I was afraid it would be just for a book for women, and the men all loved it. Yeah. And so, and I had not intended it to just be for women. I write for baby boomers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the parent, the grandparents, parents, and the children. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I, you really, it's an individual thing. Yeah. There are some writers that do not at all do that. They just don't want to trust somebody that way. Well, for me, you know, what I realized, I love being a part of a group. I love getting that feedback. I love giving feedback. Um, the only challenge is finding the time to read everybody's work. <laughs> yeah, that's a commitment. You know? Yeah, it is. It is. And but you have to limit the size of the group to do that, yeah. usually small groups. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that's a, that also, though, is what keeps you accountable. Yes. And Very actually so. writing, because a lot of writers are the worst procrastinators I would, I've ever met. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the time here. I want to cover that, too. What do you recommend? I do procrastinate on writing especially. I mean, I write daily for my Facebook, which I said is kind of like a devotional. But, um, you know, in terms of just sitting down and just writing, like you said, you have a writing day. We just write all day long. It's right? Wednesday. Yeah, it's today. So, <laughs> I mean, is, is procrastination common with writers? And if so, what do you recommend people well, do Well, Wednesday to is just that? my big blast day. Yeah. I took a mentoring class from James Scott Bell at Mount Hermon, and he kind of helped me refocus because I, when I went from nonfiction to fiction, the fiction's different. Mm -hmm. And he said, just tell yourself you're going to do a thousand words a day, take your Sunday off, and so you have a goal. Yeah. And that has worked for me. I actually produce more than that. Mm -hmm. Where before I was setting these ridiculously unattainable goals. That's number one. Do okay, not do good, that. Good. That's good. Do not say you're, and most writers will do that. Mm -hmm. And then just stick All right, within 25 that discipline. pages a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some okay. people do it by page count or word count. I do um, 
word count. And and what do you think about you know being waiting to be inspired? Is that a good practice to get into? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. no. What can you if say? If we all wanted that? to be inspired, there wouldn't be any books out there. <laughs> exactly. No. So what do you so and so instead? The inspiration you, comes when you practice the discipline of making yourself. Yes. Yes. Set down, and it comes. Sometimes it flows so much, I don't want to stop. Yeah. But the new thing in writing right now in my agency is get up and walk. Don't sit for long periods of time. You know, we're all really trying to be good about that because when the inspiration does come, you can sit there for hours and hours and hours, and that's bad for the human body. What about a voice recorder and speaking it into a recorder? I Do you used, think that's I a good idea? I use that with nonfiction, mostly because I did a lot of interviews and... I don't like it. It didn't work for me. I know some people that it does. Yeah. Um, my children's books were all written longhand. Mm-hmm. 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 With um, the cursive that they're wanting to take. I out love to write. I love to write longhand actually because I don't know. I feel like it's a, a better connection between my brain and my hand mm -hmm. than it is typing. That's weird. I know, but well, I like. Because I love to journal. I journal every day in writing. Yeah. You know. So I'm a I'm a big journaler. Yeah. Not so much this past year with the new book. Yeah. This last book has it a little different. Um, bent with it. Yeah. All three are very different. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't wait for inspiration. I yeah. wish I could. Yeah, exactly. You know, God meets you right where you are, and he is waiting for us to take um, it upon ourselves to have a discipline, and it is best. Not a set in stone routine, so you're so rigid, mm -hmm. but some sort of a commitment of like a thousand words a day. I pick when I write them. Mm -hmm. It's when my house is empty, which yeah. isn't a lot. Yeah. And um, I can think more clearly then without noise going on elsewhere because I am on the computer now. I really love what you just said, Kathy. I'm, I'm going to use that for myself, too, um, that God wants us to set a commitment, and then he'll honor that. He'll meet us there. I love mm -hmm. that. I mean, that seems so simple, but it's a great thought. It's, it's a great very truth. faithful in that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are passages I can tell you I've written that came to me in maybe 10 to 20 minutes, and they were straight from him. Yeah. They're just, I, I would sit back and think, it took my breath away. Yeah, yeah. And he just honors every little act of obedience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And he is a God of order, and he does like discipline. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're right. Very much so. Yeah, that's really good. Um, yeah, because I'm trying to organize my schedule now for writing. And I mean, I'm going to have to take a couple of other things off my plate so I can focus on this. And that's another thing. It's a commitment that requires all of our attention. I mean, uh -huh. You know, obviously we can't give something all of our attention. We have families and all that. I'm not saying that. But, you know, if you're involved in lots of different things, it's going to really be hard to write. Yeah, you've, yeah. Got to, you've got to, like, make a say. This is what I'm doing in this season of my life. It is common to have to let things go. Mm -hmm. I let something go the first of this year. Yeah. I served um, for almost four and a half years on a small press board. Mm -hmm. And I, I, had to, I resigned into yeah. January. Yeah. It was hard to do because that's another little family. But I could sense change. And I knew something had to go. Well, God wants us to say yes to the best yes. Mm -hmm. We can say yes to a lot of good yeses. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of good things out there that, he, that we can do that totally glorify him and build up the kingdom and seem like the right thing to do. But sometimes that can actually be the enemy working That's to get right. us distracted from the best thing that he wants us to do. Well, overload you know? cannot be productive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Good. Well, we're going to wrap it up, Kathy. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I'm so glad I have your phone number and I can. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't call you today, though. I'm on Facebook, too. <laughs> You're on Facebook. So, yes, um, do check out, Kathy, your website real quick? It's just KathyBoydFuller.com okay. and then on Pinterest I have my boards for my books. Good. Awesome. That's a good thing to do by the way. Good. Okay. Thank you for that. We are, we're out and I hope you have a great week. I'm praying for you and we'll see you next time. Due to its popularity, Jackson Rancheria Casino Resort is bringing back the Sierra